Creating a responsive display ad is fairly simple, yet so many people make mistakes, they end up with poor display campaign performance and then just terrible looking ads on the internet that I'm sick of seeing. So in today's video, I am going to actually create a responsive display ad and along the way, give you some tips and tricks to make sure you build the absolute best ad for your account. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so we're inside of the actual ad creation part of this particular display campaign. You will notice we have products being shown. That is because this is an e-commerce account. And so we have our product feed being fetched and it is showing the uh, dynamic product ads for our ads here. If you're not an e-commerce account and you don't have a merchant center feed connected to your campaign, you're not going to see this. If you are e-commerce, this should look pretty common to you, seeing your products in there as well. So uh, we've got URL, business name, images, logos, headlines, and all the other settings. So let's just start uh, building this particular ad out for Home Reserve. Home Reserve is a furniture company online. You can actually build your own sectional sofas. Since I am building an ad here, I figured I can I can plug them. So final URL, I'm gonna go ahead and enter that in. This is a landing page that we have that we want people who click our ad to go, uh, go to after they click. Now, to clarify, we do have our products being shown from our product feed. If someone were to click one of these products, it would take them to the product page. It would not take them to this final URL. You would only get directed there if you clicked an ad, one of our responsive display ad styles that doesn't include our products in it. So there, you know, a responsive display ad is responsibly, responsibly changing all the assets you give it. So not every time it's gonna show our products. And those times, like if it's text-based or uh, you know, more of an image-based ad, then if they click that, then they go to the family friend and landing page that we've given it. If it is a product-based ad, like it's showing here in this example, that would actually take them to whatever product I click on. It would take them right to that product page. So just to clarify there. Business name, I've already plugged that in, Home Reserve. Okay, so images. You can put up to 15 images. I am a fan of adding as many images as you can, as long as you have nice optimized images. This is where a lot of people get things wrong and they add poor quality images and it looks just really horrendous um, out in the wild when you see the ads. So what are the best images you can add? That comes down to add image sizes. So here we have a blog post, the ideal image size for Google responsive display ads. You can find all of the specs on our blog post for the landscape, square, and logos. If you don't want to go to our blog post, you can actually just hover right over this question mark here, and it's gonna give you the same information. So make sure you give this to your graphic designer. It is very important. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with horrendous looking ads like this ad, the Hoth, which is a competitor. They do mainly SEO though, so I'm gonna pick on them. I can barely read this and, and then the image looks very pixelated and it's just, it's not great. I found this randomly, sorry to pick on you guys, but uh, if any of them from that company somehow viewing this uh, video, but uh, yeah, for this example, you know, just you gotta make sure you, you give Google high quality images. Otherwise you could end up with like squished, pixelated creative that just doesn't look good for your brand. So let's go ahead and click images. If you don't have images, don't give up. Google can crawl your website if you plug it in. So uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and take out our landing page and I'm just gonna have it um, crawl our homepage. Um, not really great images here, so I'm not gonna use any of these, but you can also crawl Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn. So Google's able to just go crawl your website for some of that creative. Or you can do free stock images. You know, I, I try to avoid using stock images, but if you don't have a graphic designer and you still wanna run a responsive display ad, you Google gives you the option to actually use free stock images. So here I just typed in sofa and there's lots of different sofa images that I could use then. In this case though, we do have images. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our asset library and just go ahead and start adding these. These, these are all already optimized uh, from our design team. So I don't have to worry about the quality of any of them. If you want though, you can click into them and then crop them. 
but again, these are all cropped and, and good to go. Although eh, that one's not that great. So there you want to kind of choose different sizes too. Maybe let's center. Yeah, boom. All right, so we've selected two there. I'll go ahead and click some of these. And okay, cool. I'm at 15. So there I've loaded up 15 images and logo. Let's go ahead. I already have a logo. Again, it can crawl your website if you don't. So um, I'm going at eh, let's go ahead and use the uh, black one. There, and you can start seeing our logo now in the example. Video, I'm not going to add a video here. If you have video, you can add it and it will show in different native formats. I prefer a lot of times if we have video, we've created that video for typically YouTube or in, for Performance Max, so I'll use it there as well. I like controlling the video a little better. So a lot of times, again, we'll use that for YouTube campaigns. I'm not going to add video to this particular uh, ad that we're creating. However, if you do have video, you can add it into your response display ad. You will see, so headlines, you can add up to five. I'm going to add five. You will see suggested headlines here. It's pulling that from our landing page. And it's also, we've, we've created ads in this account before. I'm gonna go ahead and add these. These are all really good headlines that have been used before. So let's just go ahead and plug those in uh, to also speed up this video for you too. Long headline, uh, you can have 90 characters in a long headline. Regular uh, headlines are up to 30. So here we already have one in, 60 characters and Google will in certain formats show this long headline. You only get one though, so make it count. Descriptions, you get five. 90 characters, which is always weird to me, like a long headline, you get 90 and then you have the descriptions at 90. So um, it's always kind of odd. We already have descriptions ready to go. So I'm just going to plug these in. And boom. So now we have all five descriptions. We have a long headline and we have the uh, five headlines. We have 15 images. We have the logo and I don't want a video. So no video and our business name and landing page to the final URL all set. So this thing's almost ready to go. However, there's these other settings. So let's take a look at that. Go ahead. You can just use asset enhancement. That's just allowing Google to sort of enhance some of the images and layouts. If, if it's, you're just kind of saying, hey, okay, Google, go ahead and do that. You can hit learn more if you want to learn more about that. I leave that on. I see no problem with that. What I do see a problem with is use auto-generated video. Nope. If you're going to use video, give it video. If you don't want to use video, do not let Google use auto-generated video. They'll actually take your images and your text that you give it, and then they make this horrendous looking PowerPoint, early 2000s video quality. It's it's so bad. Um, they, they're notorious for doing it on Performance Max as well. Again, they hide that, don't they? So you have to actually click this additional format option to even get to that, uncheck that thing. Otherwise, you're gonna have a very, very bad looking video ad out there, which you're not going to want. And then use native formats. I'm okay with that too. If, again, they have a learn more button if you want to learn more about that. But this just expands your reach on the display network saying, sure, you can also use native formats for our ads. Then there's add URL options. I never really use that. If I'm doing any sort of UTM tracking on URLs, usually that's done at the campaign level and I not this specific ad level. Uh, and so don't, I'm not going to do anything there. There's this more options button. So this more options allows you to add dynamic ad options with this, which is like pr price and promotional copy for this particular ad. We don't need that. There's call to action text. So if you don't have that, Google will automate this. So they'll, uh, they'll test a bunch of these different call to actions. For e-commerce, I just go in and hit shop now. I don't need it testing all these different ones when I know shop now will work just fine and it is exactly what I want you to do. I want you to go buy some of this furniture. So we're gonna go ahead and just add shop now. Then if you click custom colors, if you have like very strict brand guidelines, you can add in a main color 
and then the accent color. For this ad, I'm not going to do that. Google's creation of uh, the responsive display ad for this is pretty good. And so uh, I'm gonna allow it to do its thing without adding any custom colors there, or at least, you know, sort of capping it to those custom colors. So I'm gonna just have my call to action set. Overlook everything one more time. Ad strength is set to excellent, so we're all good there. By the way, if your ad strength goes from excellent to like good, but if you uncheck any of these, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. So, so don't feel too bad if that drops, if you don't want auto-generated video. All right, let's go ahead and click save. And... Boom, we're now under review. Now, if you want to show other people on your team, in your company, or if you uh, run ads for clients, and you wanna show them examples of what the ad is gonna look like, because sometimes it's hard to do if you go into that edit version that we were just in, simply click the ad now that it's been created. It will give you this preview screen. You can then share this link. So I'm gonna click this link. You can then share this link with clients or uh, people on your team. And they can go, they can see what properties, YouTube and Gmail, they can do uh, mobile or desktop previews. You can do the same thing with websites and apps. So images and uh, image text native. So you can see all the different formats that your ads could be shown in. Make sure you do preview this. Uh, a lot of people will build an ad and then they hit save and they never preview it and they loaded it up with poor quality creative and then it looks terrible. We don't want that. So go ahead, preview it and then make changes if you see any issues there. Um, all of ours look pretty good. All right, you've created an ad now, congratulations. Now what? Most people just let it go and then that's about it, right? Your ad's created, I've already done all the hard work. Wrong. So we already have had an ad running in here for a little bit, not a lot, only 23 clicks, but you see this view asset detail button here? I'm gonna click that. So now this is going to take me inside of basically a performance overview of all the assets. So the headlines, the descriptions, and the images. So how do you optimize your responsive display ad? Isn't Google supposed to kind of do that for you? Yes, however, you can help the algorithm by continuing to feed it good creative. So in here, and this is a part of our uh, SOP of, of managing client accounts, for responsive display ads, we're looking at all the assets and we're looking at the performance. So we're looking at, all right, made for action kids and pets. That's the best performing headline or one of the best ones. We have several good, um, but look at this low. So here's a, a low performing description. I would to be optimizing this particular ad, I would be going in then and actually editing that description out and then I would be testing a new description in there and then going back and checking later as you continue to get more data to see uh, how well it did. Same with image creative. So here we'll see good, 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 best. Here's a low one. This is an image I would be removing and then we'd be testing a new image. So that is how you optimize now the responsive display ad after you've built it. So build it. You give it all the assets, doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect. Let Google get some action on it with impressions and clicks and hopefully some conversions. Uh, and then in this case, hopefully some sales. And uh, after it's got some data, make sure you're going in and checking periodically this performance tab. That way you can go in and start cleaning out the low performing assets and then adding in new assets to test. That is how you can continue to optimize your responsive display ads. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you build the best responsive display ad and you beat your competition out there. If you liked the video, please subscribe, please like, and I'm going to see you on the next video. Thanks.